Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We're proud to present Sean Carolyn with Chef. Thank you. Please give him a warm welcome. All right. How's my sound? Can you hear me okay? Great. So welcome to Cooking in the Cloud with AWS and Chef Automate. My name is Sean Carolyn. I'm a solutions architect with Chef Software. Who was here for the first reInvent? Anyone? In 2012? Do you know how many people were here? About 6,000. This year, how many? Anyone know? 40,000. 40,000 plus. So this cloud thing is not going away anytime soon. Apparently, it's here to stay. Um, back in those days, maybe you remember who was coming here. Mostly developers, startups, tech companies, early adopters. And now if you look out at this, this uh, you know, trade show floor, you see everyone. Government, public, private sector, all types of different industries are represented. Why is everyone here? They all want to move to the cloud. Some or all of their workloads are going to be running in AWS within the next few years. So we're here to show you how to make that process easier. Who's heard of Chef? All right. So no, we don't do cooking. Our cooking is with ones and zeros. We cook with code. And sometimes this code is called infrastructure as code. When I need to build a new EC2 instance, I can spin that up quickly, but then I still need to configure it. So you can use Chef to make that process a lot easier. On the left, you see a Windows Chef recipe. We're standing up a web server on a Windows machine. And on the right is a similar recipe for a Linux machine. So instead of configuring these machines by hand, we write code, and then we let the robots do all of that boring, repetitive work for us. And this way, if I need to build 10 machines or I need to build 1,000 machines, I can build them quickly and efficiently exactly the same way every single time. So this is an example of the Chef language, or DSL, domain-specific language. Does anyone know what language this is? Bonus points. Anyone? What is it? Ruby, that's right. Don't let that scare you. You do not have to be a Ruby expert to use Chef. Chef is designed to be easy for beginners and powerful for experts. In fact, we have a great learning portal. You can go online and learn how to do Chef over your lunch break. So once you've got your infrastructure defined as code, you can easily build, auto-expand, or uh, auto-scale your infrastructure. We also have a new tool called InSpec. Once you've built all this great infrastructure, you might want to test it. So InSpec is all about compliance as code. It's also meant to be machine and human readable. And this InSpec profile is checking some settings on a Linux system. Now, you might not be a Linux sysadmin. Maybe you work in security. How many developers do we have here today? OK. Any operations, sysadmins? Any marketing, sales? No? Security? Security? OK, great. Security, awesome. So this language was designed for all of you. Everyone can get something out of InSpec. We have the human readable part up here at the top that explains to us in plain English, what is this thing doing? And then down at the bottom, we have the functional code that does the testing of the machine. So InSpec can be used to quickly detect problems in your environments. You can also use it to make sure you stay compliant with things like PCI, Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA. There's so many requirements nowadays that you have to adhere to when you're building systems. So two tools. We have Chef for building your machines. We have InSpec for inspecting and testing your machines. Both of those tools form the foundation of what we call Chef Automate. Chef Automate is our commercial platform. You can see the open source foundations on the bottom, so Chef Habitat and InSpec. And then with Chef Automate, you get a lot of extra features like reporting, you get a nice GUI, you get analytics, um, you get alerts, you detect problems, and you get a nice history of all the builds in your environment. So I'm going to do a live demo here in a moment and show you how Chef Automate can help you migrate to the cloud and also manage your workloads in the cloud more efficiently. So if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and switch over now to the uh, machine that has internet access. We're going to do a little cabling. 
So hang tight while we work on that. Does anybody like to gamble? We go check out the casinos? No? I see someone here. Yeah? All right. Luck be a lady. Did you, did you make any money? Yeah. Gambling is for people who are very bad at math. <laughs> the house always wins. Let's see. OK, we should be broadcasting here in a moment. He's going to switch our video input over. Hey, look at that. Fantastic. So this is our live demo. It's the story of a company called Planet Express. This might be a company like yours, if you happen to sell frame photos of space. It's an e-commerce company. So Planet Express uses AWS to uh, build and deploy their website. If we hop over here to the Chef Automate dashboard, I can see a high-level overview of the status of all the nodes on my network. So this view is explaining to me, how are my machines being built? Do I have any issues? All my successful Chef runs are here. If I want to inspect any machine more closely, I can dig in and take a look in the attributes. So for example, if I wanted to see how much memory this box has, I can scroll down all my memory settings. So every time the Chef client runs, configures your machine, it also gathers a lot of great information. So you can use all this info for inventory. Um, you can also use it to do, build dynamic configurations. So it looks like this machine is healthy. The run progress completed successfully. And if we look at the run list here, we can see that there's nothing in it. All right. So it's easy to be successful when you're actually not, not running anything yet. Think of this as a brand new machine. It's not under management yet. I'd like to inspect it to see how, how secure it is. So to check on my security, I can go to the Compliance tab here. This is where you see all your compliance reports. You can see I don't have any profiles yet. So I'm going to browse into the handy profile store. Chef Automate includes the CIS, or Center for Internet Security Benchmarks. So these are a well-known set of benchmarks you can use to test the hardening of your systems. Right now, the profile I want to use is called the Linux Patch Baseline. And that should be right down here, uh, Patch Benchmark Security Baseline. That looks good. Linux Security Baseline. Installing is very easy. You can do it right through the UI. You can also upload your own profiles if you want to. So now that that's been installed, I can go ahead and run a simple command to apply it and start scanning my machines. I'm going to hop over to another box here. And if you don't mind, I'm going to reconnect so that we get the right resolution. I don't have to scroll around as much. OK, that's a little better. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a um, recipe to my chef run list. And let's see, what is the command for that? I believe it is update. Yep. We want to do it in the development environment. And we want to add audit. So this is just a simple um, PowerShell alias. What we're doing is just adding one instruction and telling Chef, I want you to check this machine for me. I want you to audit it. So Dev1 now has the audit configuration. And Dev2 has also got the audit configuration. Now we're going to invoke Chef Client on our dev machines. Now bear in mind, we're not configuring anything yet. All we want to do is get a view and see how, how well we stack up against this security scan. Now Chef is run. 
we can go back to our UI and check out our compliance status. And now under compliance, you can see we have two nodes, dev1 and dev2. And they've got some issues. Let's take a look and see what's failing. So the blue check marks are everything that we're passing. So those are all correct. Here are some critical failures. So here's an example. One of the recommended best practices is to install this program called Audit D. And it looks like we don't have it installed. And there are a bunch of other recommended settings for this benchmark. So now that I've detected an issue, I'm going to go ahead and try to remediate that issue. We want to fix all of these things. I have a chef cookbook that I can use for that. And there's actually a hardening recipe. So what we're going to do is run this hardening recipe on these machines. So again, we simply add our run list, the hardening recipe. And the hardening recipe is actually going to go in and fix all the things that we found wrong in the first step. If you'd like to try these out on your own environments, they're all available here, this devsec.io site. We provide code to um, scan and harden your machines. So let's reload the page and see how we did. Go back to the main page. OK, it's not finished yet. Oh, I know why. I forgot to invoke the Chef client. Now, normally, Chef runs on its own. But because this is a very short demo, I'm forcing it to run. In the real world, maybe you have 1,000, 10,000 machines to manage. You're not going to have to run it by hand every time, I promise. OK, so all the hardening bits have been run. Now we can check and see if we're compliant. Almost compliant. Now, the thing about security, if you've ever worked on systems, is that it changes. Every week, every month, there are new patches. There are new zero-day vulnerabilities discovered. And that same is true of our demo. So there's some new requirements that have come up. The log directory is not set up right. It looks like the group on the log is wrong, syslog is wrong. And audit D is not installed. So I discovered these this morning. It's always a pleasant surprise to realize your demo has changed under the fly or, or right under your feet. Um, the good news is Chef is pretty easy to fix these things with. So I whipped up a little code to deal with those issues. We're going to install audit D. We're going to fix the permissions on the syslog directory. And then we're using a hacky bit of Perl. Anyone know Perl? No? You know some Perl. Wait, where is he? He took off. So we're going to run this code and try to fix our machine. What I'm doing here is uploading the new Chef cookbook to the Chef server so that when I run my Chef client again, it will pick up the new settings. And you see how quickly I'm able to fix these problems, right? So let's do it again. Now, if we go back, theoretically, those two nodes should be fully compliant. Hey, look at that beautiful blue circle. How are we on time? 40 seconds. All right. So let's go ahead and wrap up. With Chef, you can detect problems using our compliance tools. You can remediate them using Chef very quickly, like I just did. And you can achieve continuous automation by running the Chef client on all your instances so that any time a machine drifts out of compliance or is built incorrectly, Chef will put it right back where it should be. 
You can, you can um, get Chef in a few different ways. You can buy it directly from Chef Software. You can go through Opsworks. So AWS will sell you Chef by the hour. Just go into the Opsworks link on your, on your uh, AWS control panel. You can also get Chef Automate through the AWS Marketplace. If you have any other questions, we have a booth. We're just down here on the right. Feel free to stop by, and myself or any other of our engineers will be happy to talk to you and answer any questions. And this has been the Chef Automate on AWS demo. Thank you very much.